Hey everyone, Jason here from Off The Beaten Path, picking up where we left off. So you might remember the last video we left off in the rain, in the Pinnacles car park, um, right about here. Uh, Dan and Paul went for a walk up to enjoy the view as Dan had never actually been to the Pinnacles before at the top of Billy Goat Bluff, while Luca helped me re-spool my winch uh, rope and get ready. So uh, when the guys got back, we pushed on from there um, this little loop track that's shown here doesn't actually exist anymore. It used to, probably four years ago I drove that, um, but it's been blocked off now. Um, parks obviously don't want people driving through there for whatever reason. Um, so we had to go back to 3Ks and then take this track um, through here to get onto the Castle Hill track, uh, which runs along here past Mount Valencia Couple of little campsites in there, nice little track. Um, back near the start here somewhere, there's a decent little bog hole that's only gotten worse since the last time we drove that, which was about 18 months ago in the patch. Um, the original plan did call for us to be going down Junction Spur, but that was steep and slippery last time I drove it in dry conditions, and we were far from dry conditions today, so we elected to continue past Junction Spur and come down the uh, McDonald Gap track. Uh, when we got down to the helipad here, this is where we had some discussion about what the way forward was going to be. Um, the easy option was to continue McDonald Gap track down here after the highway and head over to um, the area just north of Dargo, which was sort of as planned. Um, but, um, well, planned as in where we wanted to end up, but I did have Scrubby tr Creek track on the list to do today. And um, coming down here, the weather seemed to have cleared and it looked a little bit better, probably lulled me into a false sense of security. Um, and the guys were silly enough to go along with me. And uh, so we elected to take the fire trail track here um, and down to the Castleburn track. Um, and then from then from then on, we'll continue on the trails track and Scrubby Creek track, but that'll be in the next video. Um, I do manage to nearly completely screw things up and go horribly wrong on the Castleburn track. Um, strong chance that's the thumbnail image that you've seen on this video, and you'll see how I managed to get that, um, yeah, pretty wrong. Um, luckily, not too serious consequences um, for that mistake this time. So guys, without any further ado, let's get into the video. Hey everyone, Jason here from Off The Beaten Path. And yeah, as you just saw, we're picking up where we left off. Now this is a little little ways down the Castle Hill track. Um, as uh, you know, most of, the, most of the start of it was just two wheel drive um, tracks and uh, pretty self-explanatory okay. and, and backtracking a little bit as well. Um, now, for those of you who have been long-time followers in yeah, the channel, yeah. you might recognise this uh, this obstacle. Uh, I think I'm just going to drive the ruts. I don't really see uh, another option. Oh, I could be clever and try and take the really far left lane. I'm going to do that. I'm going to go far left. So the last time we were here was January trip last year, and that was in the patch. And uh, this obstacle looked somewhat different back then. Good view of those highway terrain tyres right there. And uh, yeah, I've uh, cooked that one. I've uh, got most of the front most of the way down at least, but then slipped the back in. So you hear from behind, you can see that rear left hand tyre just coming in way too uh, way too tight. I needed to keep that line straight up uh, for longer. But um, you know, that's how we get better at driving by having to go at these things. So, footage here from uh, yeah, Luca. Yeah, 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 no, take it in. In his car, and um, yeah, he's had a look at that left hand line. He's got the clearance and everything. He's going to just go straight down the middle of the big GQ. GU. Um, yeah, it's a patrol. Nice and steady there. He's got a two inch lift, 33 inch mud terrains, so plenty of clearance for his departure angle. And 
Yeah, yeah I went through. Got some. And as you can see, this, this rain has well and truly set in. And most of this Castle Hill track um, along the top here is um, pretty easy driving, generally speaking. It's um, basically a fire trail. Um, there's a few puddles on it today uh, from the rain, but um, not really what you call bog holes or anything like that. We were starting to think long and hard about our descent though, uh, as to which way we'd be heading down because conditions like this, however you sort of attack it, um, none of us wanted a repeat of Tea Tree Spur where we've got, you know, two hours of on the edge of our seats just hoping we don't start moving. So, yeah, last year in the patch, this is about as far as we got. Yeah, obviously did a lot to it. And, um, yeah, if you for those of you that watch those videos, been following the channel that long, you'll remember that's where the transfer case failed in the patch. And I had an eight hour journey getting the patch home from here, uh, but that is another story. So, no issues today with the 76. Um, Probably said it before a few times, but really happy with this vehicle since I've had it. Uh, at the time of editing and posting this, I've you now had the 76 probably 18 months, and um, yeah, just really happy with it and looking forward to improving its capability with uh, better tyres and um, maybe some lockers down the track as well might go astray. Big hole on the left coming up. So yeah, a bit hard to spot there on the track, um, but yeah, there was quite a bit of a hole that's developed on the track there. Castle Hill track. And some onboard footage here with Luca. Following me. Um, as, as said, you can see the track's in generally pretty good condition. Nice and wet, but it's a pretty rocky track, so we didn't really have any traction issues in this part of the track. And we're just steadily working our way south. Um, we had originally intended to take the Junction Spur track, um, or I'd intended to take that track, and um, I last drove that back in like December 2019. Um, and even then it was in dry conditions and it was a slippery kind of track. So uh, we elected not to take that track uh, today in these conditions. Because um, I remember slipping down there in the patch um, and it just wasn't a good thing. This must be that uh, Valencia campsite you were talking about, Luca. No. Oh, we passed it. No. So yeah, there's, along this track, um, in and around Mount Valencia, there's a few campsites like that um, that are sort of tucked away off the beaten path, so to speak, and another one here. Um, yeah, nice little spot up in there. Nice level grass campsites. I have actually seen no, camper trailers in here before. Um, probably be a little more challenging now with that big dip in the track, but um, yeah, certainly have seen them in here before. So yeah, that rain, well and truly setting in. And still working our way through the clouds to a certain extent, but you can see how, how heavy that rain actually is, um, and how wet the track's getting. Now this section was a little bit um, a little bit soft, um, well it had been a bit soft, you can see some, some decent ruts there. Now I did try and span them but didn't do a very good job of it and landed straight in them. So this is that same section of track from behind in Luca's vehicle. Fortunately had enough clearance. Now 
Lucas kept a, a much further right hand line and done a much better job spanning that than I did. You can see down here you didn't have a lot of choice. It's kind of a case of it, it is what it is. This is nuts. Pretty crazy. Radio chatter there, as you heard, and um, discussion on best line. But uh, mostly, we're just sort of at this point focusing on trying to get down safely again um, and giving some thought to where our campsite might be. Because, um, as is often the case, I've probably been a little bit ambitious with how much ground we're going to cover today, and the weather had certainly slowed us down a little. bits of wood there, fallen limbs and what have you on the track, which is not unusual in the high country. I think in drier conditions, when the sky's a bit clearer through here, this would be quite a scenic drive. through the Junction Spur and then another couple of kilometres onto the McDonald uh, Fire Trail track which is uh, where we elected to head to and um, turn off and follow. Not because we had any special knowledge of that track but just because I knew the other one was steep and slippery so we roll the dice and try the McDonald Fire Trail track instead and hope that that was better. Never having driven it before. And yeah, as you can see, plenty of water building up on the tracks here. Absolutely for sure. Generally making pretty good time, and we hadn't had too many obstacles. So, yeah, junction spur track on the left. So, yeah, as you just heard. Yeah, yeah, no, good. Luke, you're just looking out for me, knowing I don't like to change my plans if, if, if at all possible, but. Um, Knowing what I know about Junction Spur Track or what I remember from last time I drove it, it did not seem yeah, like a good idea to one, take the like risk to drive, drive that track it, that in that these conditions. conditions. I wouldn't want to tackle it in this kind of condition. And yeah, that's, that's exactly it. So yeah, having 
past junction, spare a couple of days on before we get to McDonald Fire Trail. So, guys, there are just chatting about. Uh, Dan will remember his first trip up Billy Goat Bluff, I'm I've sure done, he will. I've done stuff like um, that and get put in four wheel drive or something and get stuck and you go, why am I moving? Yeah, I, I thought I was a better driver than this. <laughs> Everyone else went up there really easily. They usually roll back and take ages to pick up grip. Well, a guy on his trip are calling hubs and they've got to uh, yeah, he almost, well, almost, he got himself crossed up in a track, um, forgot to lock his front hubs on. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember that. That's a little bit. Yeah, so, look, as the guys are discussing they there, you know. They were struggling in four wheel drive with him, but I said, oh, I didn't realise it was two wheel drive. Drove it anyway. That's, that's, uh, that's showing them. Yeah. We've all, uh, we've all done things on our tracks where we've forgotten something or made a mistake. Um, big, big red is easy to do. Bit of a steep drop into this sort of bog hole. Not easy to tell when you're just looking at it either. If you were taking so someone on day trip a little to Dargo gingerly. To, show, to, to show them the high country and show them how what a four-wheel drive can do, where would you go? Uh, Blue Rag number one, uh, Billy Goat number two. Um, that really does come to mind. Camping ground at the end of Blue Rag is a bit tricky to get into. Yeah, it's really. Place. Yeah, I think that's a really good question that Dan asked just there. Look at the Yeah, the other one would be obviously Crooked River. Uh, that's a bit mine. You know, um, got the little old towns that used to be in there, Bob Town, uh, Pool Town. Do Collingwood Spur. But a nice base camp would be Talbotville for all that. So definitely a bit softer and muddier this section of track. Um, a few sort of bog holes starting to form and there really wasn't too much of an option other than to just get in and have a go. I was working on the theory that the rest of the track had had a pretty firm base and generally speaking that's what I was finding. Yeah, typical chainsaw cut, just wide enough for the track there with the fallen tree. <coughs> and excuse me for coughing periodically, but yeah, as I said at the start of this video, I was getting over COVID, and so uh, we've reached here, the, the junction the here. Left-hand one, I think, isn't it, Luca? Yeah, Roger. Good one. Thank you, McDonald uh, Gap Track. So yeah, taking the left hand right, line there on the McDonald Gap track, continuing straight ahead is the continuation of the Castle Hill track, which will take you back to Marathon Road down and down the valley, the road if you continue uh, past that. I'm hoping. Hello, sunshine. So yeah, as we start descending. The, um, the weather does start to clear a little, which was nice. Still very wet on the track, as you can see. Billy Goat blast in the pouring rain. Did the 76 make it? Um, shop face emoji. <laughs> Click here. Dan suggesting good? some... Uh, Tags for uh, potential video yeah, thumbnails. A... <laughs> and as you can see, this section of tracks turned into a bit of a spur track with quite a 
drop off there on the left hand side. You're not really getting the benefit of the view from this camera angle unfortunately, but um, it was pretty epic and come down a little bit here in altitude and it's the weather's clear, the sky's a bit bluer. Um, it was a really nice drive down McDonald Gap Track. Um, this first section from the turn off of Castle Hill down to the helipad uh, where we pull up to evaluate our options is seven kilometers and it's a reasonably steady descent but uh, as you're sort of getting the idea here from this footage um, the tracks in pretty good condition um, apart from that initial section uh, where we had a few anyway. mud holes and a few of water on the track and what have you but a lot less water on the track as we're working our way down and those uh, bits of blue that we're seeing in the sky are pretty encouraging forest through here and uh, I don't think the bushfires actually came through this part of the high country uh, I mean there's obviously some trees burnt there but not to the degree that other areas are where they've all grown back you know fuzzy copy that so I shouldn't say that they didn't come through here obviously they did but um, I, I, they haven't destroyed as many trees in this area as they have in other areas plenty of suckers uh, growing up and lots of undergrowth now sort of four years past the fires and yeah generally we made a really good time coming down along here This route as an alternative. If you've gone up Billy Goat and you don't necessarily want to turn around and drive back down, you want to go somewhere different, I'd definitely recommend coming down McDonald uh, Gap Track and onto the fire trail. Um, yeah, definitely a nice drive. And there's a few options that will get you back onto the blacktop south of Targo, or you can do what we do, which I don't necessarily recommend for everybody and you'll see why that is so yeah nice nice and easy descending in the 76 you can hear the engine braking there probably coming through a little bit um, most likely second year possibly third year but probably second year low range and we really don't need to touch the brakes which is great Just easing my way through these puddles. And then a nice straight little bit of a climb before the next section of track opens up in front of us. As it would happen, this is the yeah, there it is. McDonald Gap helipad. So fire trail. Sure, track you're trying to keep to your itinerary as close as possible without diverting too far. But you know, instead of camping up there, we can you know, get to Dugger tomorrow morning and see how we go. Unless today is a four o'clock track, which we all know is notorious. Yeah, so it's three forty-four at the moment. Three forty-four. We'll get the fucking moving, mate. All right, let's go. We've got to hit the trail before four o'clock. Oh, we're going to get uh, down to Scrubby Creek. Scrubby Creek. But we've got to leave before four. You know what happens at four o'clock, right? The gremlins come out. Yeah.
So yeah, we, we did get mobile before four o'clock, so it's not the four o'clock track, but it may as well be. As you can see on the screen there, the weather seems to have cleared. So um, the guys were happy to, to follow me. Um, I was super keen to, to get across uh, to Scrubby Creek track and go out that way because I did that four years ago. It was a fun drive then. And uh, it, the feeling was the weather had cleared. Um, doesn't necessarily stay that way. Now to get across to the Scrubby Creek track, we've got to take Castleburn track. Um, so uh, yeah, that's um, that ended up being far more interesting and fun than we were anticipating. And I almost get it horribly wrong on that track. Um, so we're at a 4K stick down here down the fire trail track. Um, and, and then we turn on to Castleburn. It's only 3Ks on the Castleburn track, but it feels like a lot longer than that. And um, yeah, it was, uh, it's a lot of fun, as you'll see when we get there, guys. Um, dry conditions, um, probably be uh, a walk in the park. Uh, the conditions we've got uh, at this time, somewhat different. Uh, but yeah, look, the fire trail track here, obviously being a fire trail, really good condition. Um, you know, the alternative for what we're doing was to come down here or go down the Gap track and then take the uh, Bulgarback Creek track or similar um, onto the bitumen and then head to camp. That's probably what a sensible, logical person would have done at 3.45 in the afternoon. Um, but, you know, I, I just like to drive. Um, so, and these guys are silly enough to follow me. Um, and they keep coming back, which is awesome. So, yeah, 3.45, we've got four k's of fire trail to do, then onto the Castleburn, then onto Scrubby Creek track. So, from end of Castleburn, we, we do two k's on the trails track. Uh, and then six k's on Scrubby Creek track, uh, and then we've got to find camp. Uh, so yeah, there is that. Um, but right now, all we've got in front of us is this fire trail track, nice easy drive. Really good condition. Steep in sections. And I think one of those sections might be coming up now. As you can see on the screen there, if it's not clear, it was crazy steep, and it was. When you see the track just disappearing away in front of you like that, you know it's steep. And I did have on the list for the next day to do the Matheson track, which I also haven't done for a number of years. And Later. The way I remember it is that that was one of the steepest tracks I've driven. To the Matheson track tomorrow. Yeah, we're still later. For steepness. Still going down. Oh, okay, but we'll be going downhill anyway. Yeah, correct. Same as now. Yeah. Um. I reckon it's even part of this one. I reckon. chatting there about Castleburn track, uh, about Matheson track. Now unfortunately we didn't end up getting to the Matheson track on this trip, but uh, here we are turning left and onto the Castleburn track. Straight away this is a lot more overgrown and enclosed and feels like a track that doesn't get nearly as much traffic as the fire trail that we've just come from. Not there had lunch last trip. This, this track is diabolically slippery. What, the one we had some on tips to? there from Paul because he's actually oh, driven this track more was, recently um, than any of us. It had just been graded and it was at red clay. 
Yeah, right. So that's a long time ago now, sir. I went left on the big 401 and it's officially the four o'clock track now and here we are so there's something there's something to that because it only gets more and more interesting from here and a pretty little river As I said, the track feels really tight. Starting to get some bog holes in, and that river's right there. Stuff like this, you've really got no idea what's in there. As you can see, I just kind of nosed in and sent it, and managed to dodge the tree and the log. <coughs> okay, yep. I'm gonna just get out and check the depth of this next one. Proper looking bog hole here. Starting to really think about what, what did we get ourselves into here. So yeah, Luca came up and checked it out as well. So we've elected to try and span this, which is pretty tricky to do on a bog hole like this. Um, but we we're going to have a crack with a spotter. So what tr what I'm trying to do here is put the left hand wheels on the high part in the middle of the bog hole between the tracks where the tyres normally run. As you can see there, I'm on a decent angle, and um, but having a spotter made that Thank work. You, and um, sure enough, we're into, a, into another bog hole. Up here, nothing to worry about. Um, I'll just wait till everybody's through that bog hole. So I'm spanning this bog hole, guys, uh, to the right. Right out. So on board here with Luca and his GU, and he's taking the exact same line that he spotted me through. Now you can see his suspension flexes a lot more. Um, still got a bit of angle to his bonnet there, but not nearly the same angle that my car was on, uh, because being coils all round, he's, he's got that uh, extra flex. Uh, he's got a two-inch lift as well, and I'm still running the stock suspension. so. All of that comes into play and really big difference there in the experience, I think, um, driving that in that way. Ah, good. Nice little river. So, yeah, we've got a little stream crossing here. Castle Burn Track. How yeah, pretty is that little river there? You guys both through that bug hole? Yep. Oh, did some impromptu videography. And we're just starting to move now. Another tight little exit here. Watch that hole there, man. Uh, there, there. Yeah, there's a hole on a corner, and you come back through the creek after that. Really tight little section of track through here. That's a beautiful little track. Very pretty. Very pretty. And I think Luke had just said it all then. Yeah, it's a lot lusher and greener down here than other places we've been, isn't it? Yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah, we are in a gully, yeah, but absolutely, the, the green when it's wet, it looks beautiful, really good green. So, yeah, just as it tries to lull you into a false sense of security. This looks fun. Yeah, what a 
all the way around the corner. You can't really see where you're going or what's ahead. Um, no real spot to get out and try and walk it. So edge of the truck plunge here. on in. You can see the river's right there. Very narrow section. Very narrow section of bank there that's almost starting to collapse. So you see that on Lucas footage. So just watch the right. You can see how I'm trying to steer left. Uh, you can see that bank has uh, partially collapsed there on the right hand side. Um, probably more visible in this footage from Luca than my footage. But yeah, definitely careful around that. And um, the bog holes and water on the track just kind of kept on coming. Make sure they stand. Yeah, good idea. I'll pull up just down here because yeah, you don't want to miss that. So yeah, Luke is just waiting back there to make sure that uh, Paul and Dan actually see that collapsed section of the bank. And um, again, you can see here, like, there's the river, there's the track, there's the river, there's the track. It's kind of just water everywhere. Um, no wonder the ground's so waterlogged with the river's right there, right next to the track in some of those sections. Um, yeah, just found myself in some ruts here and ran out of clearance with those 32 inch highway terrains. And we're done. definitely helps to bring friends so that, that was a case of me driving the line that was right in front of me and not come, come looking back. ahead enough and realizing I needed to get out of that line so just a snatch strap on the rear oh, well, cover yeah, shackle well, and much. it doesn't need much tension as you can see stop 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 not a lot of tension on that at all just driven over the top on Lucas recovery strap there, but he got me out and um, I was able to get over the right hand in. side and uh, clear those ruts. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we're good. And yeah, yeah this decent puddles there on the left hand guys. side. And Another one just up ahead. I'm going to get out and just have a look at this. You come back more further. More interesting. I oh, know oh, you've done it. So, yeah, th this is some footage from that section with the ruts where I've just managed to back up a little bit uh, and then get out of them. And you can see Luke is already pushing out of the right hand side line. to span Tackle those ruts rather than like get stuck like I did. Okay. You can probably just see my diff drag marks in the middle. And just coming up here where there's that bug hole on the left of my vehicle. And another one another one around the corner to the front. So You're right then. So we did get out and have a look and decided it was drivable. I thought we were just waiting on them. What's going on there? Oh, okay, okay. So, not much choice but to plough straight in. Yeah, that was fine, Luca, like you said. Nice and steady on the throttle. See that section again here with uh, footage from behind from Luca's vehicle. Yeah, that's a little love you copy it. I want to film. Yeah, that was fine, Luca, like you said. Not, not too deep, but when you first look at them, you just don't know. And Luca with his mud terrains has just nosed in there and uh, driven that nice and easily. Good. Anyone 
one step ahead of you. Roger. Another little bog hole there, and another one in front here. So I've elected oh, right. to drive around that, that to the left because, because the there is a bypass right. track. Around to the right, and then another bypass here on the right. Track on the right, did you say? Yeah, we had got yeah. a little bit separated. No, but from that's up further, a lot further down the pool. where you guys are. You guys are back there. Uh, you'll see a chicken track. And uh, now this has slowed down because uh, little did I know I was about to get this horribly wrong. You seem to go to the left there. My God, what the hell's just happened? So yeah, just a bit of a slip there now. Look, I didn't even have my foot on the accelerator. This is the onboard, uh, onboard footage. Go to the left there. Oh my God, what the hell's just happened? I'm all good. I don't know why the hell it just accelerated. Just missed those trees. Everything okay? Yeah, from... Yeah, just that close. Yeah. So look, the only thing I can surmise there is uh, my foot has slipped um, and I've hit the accelerator going over when, when the car slid in and my foot's bumped and, the accelerator. Uh, yeah, so if you guys need and, to stop and film, uh, that's what's happened. Happened. we've all stopped together, I think, because this is, this is an un... you know, this is a bad... bad Bad track. Bad track, good track, depends on your perspective, but yeah, it's got some challenges, that's for sure, what's and all. So yeah, just having a good look. Um, not that you can tell much on bog hole like this just by looking at it from the top, but... No, it's been good so far. Yeah, once you commit it on a track like this, just carry on. Yeah. Look, don't get me wrong, this was a lot of fun. Um, I'm just glad that, you know, when I screwed that bog hole back there up, that no... No damage was done to the vehicle. Okay, good. We've done um, fine. That's, uh, and, that's good. Um, Thanks, boys. Sorry, guys. We, we push on all right. So, um, and yeah, we are coming towards the end of the Castleburn track. Elevated up from the river a little bit more, much drier, still very closed in sort of feeling. Well, I'll uh, hold you to it. <laughs> Fam famous last words right there, yeah. Uh, scrubby track will be the next video, guys. Look, I hope you've enjoyed this one. Um, this was an epic trip. Like, we're, none of us are forgetting this trip anytime oh, soon. Little this little stint on the uh, Castleburn track was it's just dangerous. unreal. And uh, about yeah, it's not done with us yet. As, as you can hear from that sigh emanating from me and the driver's seat there. Given the time of day, yeah, we we're taking the safe options where they were available um, because uh, none of us wanted to be doing this in the dark, if at all possible. And uh, yeah, there's nothing you can do with stuff like this other than just commit. The next really big one, I went straight through the middle, it was fine.
Look, this one where I'm at now, just because it's there, I'm going to take the chicken track on the right. Um, who knows what's on the left. Reasonably tight there on the right between the tree and the log, but um, yeah, certainly not deep. Reasonably cosy on the corner. The GU through there as well. Once again, very happy with how the vehicles performed in these conditions with the uh, tyres that I'm running at this point on the car still. Again, not a lot of room to get past the end of that fallen tree there. Just enough as they like to say. Soon. I'll try and check this one for depth. So, yeah, this one, another big long one going around the corner. I did decide to just check that for depth and err on the side of caution a little bit if I could. And it seemed okay, so we're pushing on. But yeah, it's a little unnerving when you see that much water on the truck in front of you. And it, it could be anything under it, really. Going, um, guys. I didn't check the whole thing, but just to, as much as I could. So, and look, we're right, almost at the end here of the, the car burn track, getting ready to start scrub, scrubby track. That'll be in the next video. Um, thanks for watching, as always, guys. Really appreciate all your comments uh, in uh, in the comment section down below. If you haven't subscribed to the channel and you do watch our videos, please subscribe. Really helps us out. Uh, at the moment, we've got about 60-70% of people watching the videos are not subscribers, uh, and we'd love you to subscribe. Really helps us out. So, um, thanks again, guys, and I will see you in the next video.